Record on this computer. <clears throat> on live yet? Give me a little more water, please. Because you are on my computer. I think I'm live. Okay, I'd like to call today's finance committee meeting to order uh, February 17th, 2021. Um, members present are Ms. Earlston, Mr. Ivy, and Tom Fellner. Um, if uh, you've had a chance to review the minutes, I'd like a motion to approve and accept the minutes of January 20th, 2021. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. Oh, Mr. Second. Ivy makes the motion and Mrs. Earlston uh, seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries and the minutes are uh, approved. Um, we have uh, the agenda presented before us. There are a couple of late additions, but um, if anyone has any um, thing to add, if not, I'd like to, a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Ms. Earlston makes the motion and Mr. Ivy seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, first discussion item is uh, a uh, Treasury Investment Action Ordinance 2021-17. Uh, and I'm going to ask Mr. Baldinger to elaborate, please. Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, this is uh, in regards to a meeting that we held, I believe it was, um, what, January 27th, was it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I might have needed to fix that. Yep, I do. So you didn't fix that yet? No, I forgot. So, it's on there now. Blank. Yeah, yeah. January twenty seventh. Um, we had uh, the, the uh, we made a motion to reinvest as recommended by Nick Vaccaro. Vaccara. Um, we have a. Uh, $599,380 investment maturing on, that matured on February the 2nd. Um, then we have a, another one maturing February 19th of $299,087.75. Um, those both were approved for reinvestment. The uh, $599,000 one was approved for, for five years. And uh, the uh, $299,000 one was um, put in the one year space. Um, other than that, I don't have anything much on this ordinance. Julie? Yeah? I have a question. I don't know if this is pertinent or not, but it just lists as recommended by, by Vakari, which he is an employee with Meter Investments. I, don't I just went by what the minute, the minute said, but okay. Yeah, that's it. Well, that was his really recommendation. I noted that he was with Meter Investments. I just don't know if we should maybe tie that in with it. Okay, I can put that. That's a good idea. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Julie. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, I just had one one thing. I tried talking to Julie before the meeting. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, we we have two or three of these pretty much every month, and um, Julie says it's in the that we approve these every all the time, and and I don't know that we've really ever. Well, I think we've done it a couple times. Well, Julie's found those out, but I don't think. We don't approve these every time we have one. So um, we just, unless we're reinvesting more money or um, doing something else, we uh, allow meter to invest them and they don't go to the council. So I'm, I'm not sure why we're doing it this time, but I don't want to make us think about it either. So um, just was wondering. Does Rob, the investment committee normally make a motion on it? Well, I don't 
Rod, um, I think one of the, uh, I was in on that meeting, although I am not, uh, I'm a, a silent or participant, but not a voting member. Um, you're, you're right about that uh, in terms of um, it's enough for the uh, investment uh, council to um, make the policy. I think Nick wanted, um, there was a lot of changes coming up with uh, interest rates, uh, the economy, things like that. I, I think that, um, uh, and also uh, with uh, uh, Gail as a uh, auditor um, to have a meeting and and go through it uh, a little with a little more uh, fine tooth comb. Okay. Um, and, um, and I can't I can't address the reason why it was put in ordinance form and not just voted out of committee, but it, it definitely was voted out of committee. Okay, but we have these maybe two or three every month. And so it's up to you guys what you wanna do. I don't really care. Um, um, Talking about meetings with meter? No. You guys the meet that many times a month? No, we, we reinvest this money like two or three times a month all the time, so. Well, I'm uh, then the investment committee doesn't make a motion on it. Any motion of the investment committee needs to be approved by council. This was a motion from the investment committee. Okay, then the investment committee needs to meet a heck of a lot more often than, than once a year. So. Well, they, if, they, if they can just invest it without going through the investment committee, then the investment committee doesn't, anything that invest, they have to vote on. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. saying. Okay, I apologize. That's I just wanted to make sure. But generally we just, you know, if we, we tell them whether long term or short term, but if the invest since the investment committee met and 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 voted on it, then I think you're right. So okay, I apologize. No problem. That's what these are for. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, uh, Rod? Uh huh. What the schedule I have on my computer, um, I don't have it in front of me right at the moment, but um, the schedule that Nick sent me. Oh, uh, showed me that there is several more coming, but it's not it's not two or three a month that I see. Um, well, it usually it's that are maturing this year. There's only like just, four or five yeah. more that's going to mature this whole year. Okay, yeah, I wasn't specific. I'm just talking out loud too. So, um, you know, you got it right in front of you. I don't have it in front of me. So, um, but we do have them throughout the year, and. Uh, we usually yeah. don't vote on it, but that's okay. But since yeah. we met with him and talked about, I think it's a good idea. And the city's policy is to meet with meter twice a year. Okay. A minimum, a minimum of twice a year. Right. Okay. And I missed the meeting too, so I apologize. That's that's my fault. Uh, do we have any other uh, questions? Uh, may I uh, add just a different? Uh, part of that. The other major uh, piece of information that was related is that, and I don't have the the uh, binder that it was sent out, but we're we're going to have to reduce or keep an eye on the investment income. Um, some folks going back into last year's budget deliberations, we narrowed that down. We had an excellent year in the mid four hundred thousands, if I recollect. Uh, in interest income and uh, meter is advising us that we're gonna have even less than the 170, I believe that's in the budget. So I, I again, I'm pretty good at <laughs> remembering those kinds of numbers, but somebody who can pull up the, the um, revenue report and, and continue to participate in the meeting or when we're done, you go to the rev revenue report and look at the investment line item. I think it says 170, and then the meters forecasting something less than that. So I just want it. It's not a. It's just an update. I think it's something that we're going to have to keep an especially close eye on this year, which is the our revenue streams and how they're performing. And this one. Our advisor said, "Dial it back, even off our estimate." So, 
thanks for letting me contribute that piece of good news. I, I think uh, knowing it and anticipating it, it's, it's uh, worth worth mentioning. Um, <clears throat> any other questions or comments? Ms. Earl Stephen or Mr. Ivy? Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I don't mean to burden anybody with this, but Mr. Baldinger, can you please give me a 30 second Cliff Notes versions for dummies on what we're talking about here? This is the first time I've ever heard of meter or investments. I just I need to know what we're looking yeah, at here. <clears throat> this is um, investments that we have invested through meter. Um, they're um, they're the ones that manages our invest these investments. We have. We have several of them. Like I said, there's probably five more or so coming due throughout this year, uh, somewhere thereabouts. I don't have the, the schedule in front of me right now, but there's something like there's a few more coming on later in the year. Um, these are just uh, monies that we have invested um, long term that generates a little bit extra income for the city. They're just an investment company. Okay. And this right is now, just, yes. and, and then coming before in the form of an ordinance is kind of an anomaly. It's well, I don't, uh, I don't ever being on console. I don't ever remember ordinances coming through in the past on these, and uh, I think that's kind of what Rod was referring to. So I was kind of, I was kind of put back when this uh, ordinance came out. I but it wasn't aware that this needed to be an ordinance form because it was voted out of that committee. Because I don't ever remember doing it in the past. And can anybody answer? Is this something? I'm sorry. Yeah. From 2014 to 2018, we did them, and somehow they stopped after 2018. Yeah. Can we expect this going forward for each each one in the next in the future, or is this just a one time situation? Only when the investment committee meets, any action of the investment committee, according to their policy, is not valid until approved by uh, the council. And then Aaron, just to let you know, we have about $13 million in investments. Um, okay. And, and Meter holds that for us. We have it in, uh, and it has different maturities throughout the, you know, five years and, and less. Um, and those come due. And then we, we review it. Um, you know, I review it with uh, Gail and uh, Brian before. And then if the mayor you know, need some money, we don't, we won't invest that very long. So that's kind of what we review every time we comes to, but then the investment committee met. So now it needs to have a council's approval. So. Thank you. So that's what we do. Okay. Hey, Doc, may I add a little to that, please? In sure. addition to those funds that we're talking about that meter invests on our behalf, I, I think they're best thought of is the is a, a large slice of the general fund. If you look at that, there's six and a half, seven million. If you look at the utility fund balances, uh, the whole range of, of um, accounts, it's those accounts that we expect to be held in reserve from, as Gail was saying, from short term out to five years. In addition to that, we have, um, accounts with the state, Star Ohio, and I think it's called Star Ohio Plus. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's one yeah, of them. It's almost funny that Star Ohio Plus, it's, they're, they have turned in this environment a very low interest rate. Uh, but one of the good things about that, pro, that investment product is that it's real liquid. It's you know, it's almost like having the money in, in an overnight account with a local bank. Um, just quickly on the history, we used to have more money in our local banks, sort of on reserve. We've shifted away, kind of moved a little bit of that council and previous uh, auditor towards Star Ohio. Um, but those are really the, if you would think about it, the three investment areas kind of overnight cash in our checking account, doesn't earn much interest. Any at all, Eunice? Does our checking account earn anything at all? Sorry, I wasn't unmuted. Yeah, yeah does we, our, we I'm have, used to that people not listening, believe me. So the, <laughs> we have a little bit in our in, in, of interest in our checking account. 
correct? We have, we have the sweep account where they sweep that out that it earns more money. I think that's what you're thinking of is the sweep account where it takes yeah. the money out. And, yes. So that's available cash. Kind of think of it as local cash. And then there's the Star Ohio's, which are very liquid, but the trade-off is they aren't bearing much of a return. And then there's what we're talking about that. I think if, if Rod says it's 13 million, I'll take his word for it. But the majority of our investments are in those uh, accounts managed by meter. I, you know, while I'm throwing out bouquets, the, the person who came up with doing that really pointed it out to the new uh, mayoral system was former treasurer Durbin. Looked at those accounts, looked at them, said, man, we aren't earning any interest. And sure enough, we weren't actively in investing. So uh, just a shout out, as they say, uh, kind of pointed us in that direction. Last thing I want to mention, I went and checked. Um, it, it's 180,000 that's in the revenue side of the budget. I don't, you'd ha I'd have to get out that report, Gail, that Nick shared with us that to see what he's revised that interest income for this year, what he's revised that down. But it, I, I recollect it being a few tens of thousands. So we'll check that in the morning and kick that out. I really can't get to that report. Um, kind of in my email and still stay on the Zoom call. So thanks for letting me uh, chime in. Appreciate the clarification. Okay. And, and one other thing, um, that Star Ohio account is accessible within 48 hours. So it's pretty much like a checking account, so. Okay, um, if there are no other questions or comments, I'd like to uh, hear a motion to move Ordinance 2021-17 uh, on full council. As amended. As amended. Thank you. Thank you. I will uh, be happy to make the motion to move Ordinance 2021-17 as amended uh, onto full council. Mr. Ivey makes the motion. You're muted. <laughs> Tammy, you're muted. I didn't see a wave, Tammy. I know, sorry. Okay. I will second that. Ms. Ms. Earlston seconds. Uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Um, on to the next item um, is an FAA and CARES resource related grant. Um, is Ms. Ward available? She is. She's on there. Yes, she is. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, so this is basically the same type of grant we received last year. Um, I got the application in the mail, you're getting $9,000, please sign on the dotted line. So it's the same as last year where we can use it for operations, um, payroll, maintenance, basically anything that revenue at the airport would have produced for us to maintain the airport, we can use it. So $9,000 last year was 30, but again, you know, 9,000 bucks we can put toward our portion of the million dollar project this year. Sure. Questions or comments? If not, I'd like to hear a motion to move ordinance 2021-18 onto full council for Tuesday night. I will make a motion to move ordinance number 2021-18 onto full council. Ms. Earlston makes the motion. He's waving. <laughs> I'll second. I'm sorry. I was on mute this time. <laughs> Mr. Ivy seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, next item for discussion is uh, uh, budget item 204 funding. And I think Mr. Mayor has some comments on that. I just uh, thank you, uh, Doc Fellner. I I don't see my camera on, I apologize for that. I don't, don't know quite what happened, but I'll go ahead and uh, make some comments. What I, my intent is to make sure that in the committee <clears throat> that there's a clear understanding of how we have managed uh, 204, basically the 0.11 uh, income tax levy uh, since we've been out of fiscal emergency. You can get into a lot of um, 
discussion going back into the mid nineties um, um, about how it's been used. Uh, I, I don't know if that serves a, a real useful purpose, but uh, I think the main point of what I wanted to at least introduce uh, is uh, a little bit of data. We'll send this out in an email. I got it late today. Not sure, I, I don't think council members got it, but the short of it is that we have spent in the last uh, four years, uh, 17, 18, 19, uh, and 2000, a, about 5,000 labor hours, between 5,000 labor hours and 52 or 300 labor hours uh, performing work in the parks. So I think a quick um, uh, division by 2080, kind of the standard full time, would give you an idea that there's about two and a fraction uh, full time equivalents that are charged out for a, a, a range of park maintenance activities. So uh, that has been uh, what we've done since we got out of fiscal emergency. Prior to that, it was it was. Um, much less based on the hours that city workers uh, worked in various activities, but much more based on a certain number of those employees that came out of certain funds. So I, I believe we've, um, I guess, if you'll accept the term, transitioned from uh, a rigid three full-time equivalents and their benefits uh, which is increasingly an issue because of the cost of, of uh, health insurance benefits, uh, but to a point really where we have about two, just barely over two um, full-time equivalents. Um, so I think that's movement in the right direction. I think if, if you go beyond that, if you reduce the number of um, uh, if you if you eliminate 204 funding for those, um, 5,000 hours worth of work in the parks. You have to move that somewhere. And I, if I were asked tonight to make a decision, if council wanted to eliminate salaries entirely, I'd suggest that you went into the general fund and appropriated more money, which would have an impact on the balance and probably less preferable that you would take that same amount of money and somehow fit it into the street budget. So um, the, the others oh, room for uh, discussion. That was my intent in bringing it up. But what I wanted to do is give a good basic explanation of <clears throat> um, what salaries are paid, how much in terms of number of hours and, and see if that um, uh, cleared up any questions that might be in committee members' minds. So I don't know if I'm a black screen or a, or here I'm back, I guess. Now that I'm, I heard your camera around. <laughs> yeah. You were showing the table. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm trying to throw, learn how to throw my voice. So sorry <laughs> about that. Anyways, that's, I think that's uh, meant to open up any discussion that might be out there um, and offer an alternative if that's, you know, if that's kind of how we, I, I think uh, that's how council wants to go. I think the, the fact is uh, we're going to be doing some amendments to this budget as we go through the years. So I, I don't think I prefer not to make a change, but um, council has that discretion to shift around where they would want these salaries paid out of. I don't think anybody seriously um, thinks we shouldn't do those activities which are basic maintenance activities in the park so anyway that's what i've got i don't if there aren't any uh questions maybe it's a maybe it's um a dead issue but i don't i don't think it serves us any uh purpose to to um get into uh ongoing discussion about um whether or not how we fund the parks with the parks levy is is um, is as good as we can do or needs change. So that's what I got, Doc. Hey, Ms. Earlston. 
how, what kind of an effect would this have long term? Oh, I mean, I think the the uh, I went and looked at it. The salary and benefits, say over the last four or five years, has been in the range of a hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year. So if you if you stopped funding those activities out of the parks fund, it would have it, you'd have to pick that up, if you will, if that's the right term, uh, out of the general fund. Um, you'd be shifting those costs so that the long-term effect is that it would be a draw on the general fund of whatever amount that is per year, 150, 175 in that range. Okay, thanks. Aaron, any questions? Um, I guess the only question I've got is how, I've read this ordinance four times and I'm not clear on exactly what it means. I mean, how is this going to affect um, uh, section 204 of the budget. I, I don't understand. I've read this four times and I still don't, can't comprehend what it's saying here. And it's not that difficult for me to understand things usually, but how does this affect section 204 of the budget and the parks rec levy? Are we, is, does this, does this ordinance continue to pay for labor or does this, what does this ordinance do? And well, should they, we have not discussed 204 before we had an ordinance to look at? I don't want to change anything, Aaron, but if what I don't know what ordinance you're talking about. The one I'm asking 95. out of complete humility and ignorance. I really have no idea why this ordinance okay. is here. I just is don't it know. 90, you're talking about budget, the, but the ordinance no, from no. 1995. Yeah, right. I don't I don't want to be I really am not going to be argumentative. I think it's pretty clear. It says recreation and acquisition of property. The, the briefest I would put into context, when you go read um, newspaper articles and other stuff that was being discussed, and you think back, that was in the period of time where there was some discussion about the need for an additional reservoir. And in the conversation, you read about that being specifically one of the land acquisition purposes. You know, it's like our other res reservoirs. They, they double up as water supply and retention and uh, recreational resource. So, so that was one of the meanings of acquisition of real estate. Um, then, you know, along came PICO too. And maybe it's, uh, I, I bet it does the credit, if you will, or the thank you belongs to more than just Matt Smith. But let's just say Matt Smith led the, the charge at PICO to donate that ground that is now uh, the softball slash baseball complex. So that was the other in the, if you will, the con what they were talking about, what the meaning of that was. There was at, at that point, there was a desire to build PICO, the PICO quad. And so um, that's why the second part of that acquisition of real estate, that's kind of why that's in there. It's interesting when you look at it now, it's like, heck, we never did that. And in part, it's because Matt Smith provided the ground out there because it could have been anywhere, you know, just was adjacent to the existing Pico Park. And then the other part was the, um, you know, this discussion about the need for some land for a reservoir. So recreation, I think if that is, that may be a confusing part I think that you can get into semantics. I would argue that how can you have parks and recreation in the parks if you don't maintain them? It's and that's why I'm kind of, that's not why I'm kind of, that's why I think it's, all, it's, a, it's a good practice to charge just the salaries and the prorated benefits of people working in the parks to the parks fund. And when that same set of people or some of those people are working somewhere else than we charge uh, that particular fund. And, and so anyways, I don't know if that unconfuses, but the it, it is kind of why I believe it says what it, it does and that <clears throat> I'm suggesting that we continue to put a portion of the salaries of the, of the gang that works in the park some on a daily basis and some intermittently that we charge those back um, 
to that fund, to the various funds they're working in. So anyway. Was, Tom, was that date of the ordinance about the time we entered fiscal emergency and we're receiving help from the-, the No, Doc, it five. Uh, this is, this, I like the history of it and, and, you know, the history of city government in particular, but in, in 91, uh, they, we passed a levy that was used. It was a five-year special. It was that same rate of income tax that was used to rebuild the High Sea Park pool. It's kind of funny. I guess you get about 30 years out of a pool when you, when you redo it pretty thoroughly. So, um, we may be getting to that point that gets a little ahead of, it's more of a parks discussion. But anyways, that's when it was first passed. It was expiring. They ran a, a levy to make it a continuing, if you will. And that's where this, that was in 95 to go in effect when the levy expired beginning in 96. Okay. So, uh, you know, kind of right from the start, they, had, they used it for personnel related stuff. But I'm, I, I think, yeah, that's probably all I need to say. Tammy it looked like she had a question. Uh, so initially in 91, when the initial levy passed, um, it was not a continuing levy at that point. I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. So initially when the, the levy was first passed in 91, it was not a continuing levy at that point. Right, and it was specific, you know, right. It was specific yeah, to make the repairs in High Sea Park pool. You know, there was, as I recollect, I think it was a plaque down there. There was a bunch of state money that like poured in the, the, the uh, bathhouse and all those things were rebuilt. If you think way back, however long that, mm -hmm. however old that makes you when that happened and um, significantly rebuilt the pool. I think they got rid of the old baby pool, Gail. But yeah. In uh, has yeah so there was a bathhouse there yeah they put up a new bathhouse as i remember yeah yeah heck that was from wpa so anyways all of that was built in um in that 91 to 95 period and then they renewed it to do you know a, a bunch of stuff when you go through it but go, i'm sorry go ahead Tim. sorry uh, that's okay. I was just thinking, you know, all of this aside, um, you were, you're just discussing uh, possibly um, using 204 funds then to, um, to use, to use 204 funds um, in place of that. Is that what you were saying initially with all this levy stuff aside? 204 is the levy. Oh, so but you're talking about yeah. funding it out of yeah the money that go that that the revenue source for all of the kind of predictable revenue into the parks fund is the levy. You'll okay. see uh, from year to year you'll see some Nature Works grants, and we've done I think a, a, a reasonably good job of bringing in some state funds to taught to uh, combine with. Often, in, you know, two or three key cases, uh, state funds, local funds, freeze funds to do some of the bigger projects. So, so you're, you're suggesting taking it out of just the general fund? No, I'm suggesting let's go as, as we have. I, I think it's appropriate, but if you were, if you wanted to prohibit or change it so that, um, by changing the appropriation, you, you know, just have to take the salaries and benefits out of the budget. What, what we would have to do so as not to create uh, sort of internal budget chaos is anything you cut from salaries and benefits in parks, you'd have to come up with supplemental money that would likely be appropriated in um, in the in 201, uh, I'll defer a little bit to Gail and to uh, Eunice. You know, we might create another fund within the 101 fund. What I what I don't mean to confuse the issue. What I would what I would prefer is that we went ahead like we are, but if council wants to change that, there's a way to do it. The downside being a reduction in the general fund um, surplus cash. 
So Tammy, if I could maybe, um, I don't know if I'm gonna clarify or not. Um, the money from the levy goes into the, uh, the 2 fund. And there was a question um, or some, uh, and, and Aaron, I'm not gonna throw you under the bus or anything. Um, you were the one that kind of instituted and some questions on this particular levy as to what the ordinance said it was to be used for. And so Tammy, if we want to uh, interpret or figure out what the ordinance was to be used for and take that money from 204 and use it for those purposes, then we're gonna to have to find money in the general fund to, to supplement that, to replace it. So this isn't um, a found uh, bag of cash that, you know, it, it, it's been used, you know, uh, since its inception um, appropriately for the, for the parks funds. Now it has not, you know, specifically bought new equipment, but indirectly it has because it's, it's assisted in the maintenance of it. So I don't know if that helped or if it did not. No, I understood. I was just, um, I was just messing up my numbers when I said 204, I meant, I meant the general fund. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, so the only thing I would say, and, and I'm quite willing to sort of have this as a national discussion, food for thought, and those kinds of things, but we have purchased quite a bit of hardware, if you will, um, just in the last uh, seven years with those park funds, and, and um, you know, we've itemized that. I don't know if that serves a purpose now, but uh, there are a number of things. Um, you know, actually, the, they, they came out of the, the last survey that we did on use of what the parks need and use of freeze and other funds. A lot of the bathrooms that have been built, uh, we used a, a, a large slice of, um, of these funds to build those uh, bathrooms. You know, I think the lack of ADA bathrooms is a, is a real uh, turnoff for uh, people that want to use the parks. So that's, that was the logic behind that. So. And Aaron, uh, if I misspoke, I, I apologize. Yeah, that's okay. And we only, uh, like the, the uh, Splash Park, that's the one I should stick my chest out and belabor the thing. A hundred thousand of the Splash Park came out of 204. So that, those were the early years of Freeze Foundation. I remember um, uh, criticism about spending 400,000 for the, for the Splash Park. So, uh, what well, hasn't been that long ago, but the point being that we have used the, these same funds, the park and rec income tax derived funds for a number of, um, of um, toys and uh, new facilities. Um, so I wanted to mention that as well as helping to fray some of the, the um, a park maintenance salary and benefit costs. Thanks. Um, I, I don't know, we don't have um, either a resolution nor a uh, ordinance to move forward on that. And as the mayor suggested that this might be uh, um, open for further discussion. Aaron, I'm, uh, I apologize that I didn't uh, make you own something that wasn't yours there uh, as far as the issue. Did, did you have any other questions? No, you know, and like I said, I, I, I'm, a, I'm asking these questions out of ignorance and utmost humility. And I guess the best way I can ask this question with the ordinance that we're staring at right now, and forgive me, I, is this keeping things the way things are? Or are we talking about removing the labor and the wages and the benefits and the pensions and the union dues out of 204 and looking at possibly restructuring the other four columns in the budget to make sure those are paid for? I can completely understand why we, you know, I can completely understand a small portion of 204 going into the mowing. And if, you know, you're never going to be able to use the parks if you can't get through it and, and snow needs to be plowed out. But I, I guess that's the best way to ask the question. Um, the ordinance that's before us, does that keep things the way things have always been going over the past several years? Or does this ordinance address that issue and pull those other areas and possibly look at restructuring them into the other four sections of the budget 
and getting those um, getting those areas that I just mentioned out of 204 with the understanding. And I'm, I mean, I certainly can understand, like I said, and compromise that a small portion of that should go to the mowing of the parks. But I guess the best way to put it is if, so, if we're, they're plowing down Fairview Avenue and they're pulling that money out of 204, I think we can all agree that has nothing to do with the, uh, the parks and uh, recreation levy and, or the recre, excuse me, recreation and acquisition of public uh, property. Um, but that's just my that's just my thought. I just want to listen to what the taxpayers voted for. I'm interested to see what the taxpayers' uh, definition of recreation is, and um, because I I don't know you know trying to be funny here, but I don't know anybody that other than maybe Forrest Gump who would consider recreation in the form of mowing, and he did it for free. He liked it so much. So I just want to be clear on this, and you know I'm not trying to create a stink. I'm not trying to you know start a fire here, but that, you know, the Galleonites voted for this levy for recreation and the public acquisition of property. And I'm not sure that if we were to put a survey together, how they would define how what their definition of recreation might be. Because I'm confident that mine is not the things that we've been paying for out of that section of the budget. Well, That's without, all I'm saying. Hold on a second. Wait, wait. I don't think there's an ordinance before us. No. Uh, the, the discussion item, I mean, it was just that. Are we going to continue uh, as we have been in the spirit of that ordinance? So there's no ordinance before us to change anything. Um, the ordinance I was that looking at the wrong thing, Doc. I was looking at dash 19, the leisure. And that's what I've been staring at and reading five times. Oh. I was moving. Up. That's why I said, well, shouldn't we be discussing 4204 before that we were putting this ordinance? Forgive me. I was wrong. Oh. Now... I'm, I'm clear. Okay. So, so this is an open ended, this is an okay. open ended discussion. Uh, My the mistake. First, the first, um, you, you know what I'm saying? The first approach at, I see. Are, are we going to amend 204? And if, if we do that, then we're going to need to um, amend the, the general fund as well. I mean, you know, redo, read, amend the budget as we go along. I understand. So I apologize. Cool. Bear, I'm not trying to be adversarial. I just absolutely was uh, just looking at something on my phone, trying to look at the screen and looking at my phone at the same time. If I could, Dr. Fellner, I'll just sure. say this in closing. You know, at the Parks and Recreation Committee meeting is when this came up last week. I appreciate it coming back on in the finance. I had a feeling it might would to, that it may be the case tonight. Um, but I would just like to see the money spent in section 204 in the way that the Galleonites intended for it to be spent when they voted for their taxes to be increased. That's it. And I don't think any rational person would think that pensions, union dues, wages, salary increases. But with that said, I can understand why some people would believe that, hey, we got to have the parks mowed. Hey, we've got to have the plowing done. But I would, if, if labor or maintenance needed to be done, I would assume that because of that levy, it would be maintenance on the capital equipment that we're purchasing for the recreate for the recreation aspect of that levy. And if I'm, but that's that's my feelings on it. And like I said, I'm one of seven, so you know, I appreciate the open forum here for sure. Well, I think uh, we can uh, you know do some um, individual research, uh, and I mean, there's uh, there's got to be a balance um uh with the the money i believe the money is being spent appropriately however aaron i see mm -hmm. your point on things um mm -hmm. and if we are going to utilize H -H 204 for a much narrower view then the general fund is going to have to pony up the, the the balance the what's mm -hmm. not used so and I brought that up Dr. I, I, last I, week. I brought that up as well that you know we have five sections of that budget that we pay our city workers out of and I even alluded to you know if we put our minds together and we are all have a common goal we've got 10 months before the next budget comes out and I even conceded and I think I actually used the words and I was using uh, Eunice as an example that if we tried to do this now after the budget was passed, it almost borderline on evil because of everything that she went through in November and December. But we have 10 months to think about this. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I you know it was the first time I ever voted. I was 26 years old. I don't remember voting for this. But I was 25 years ago. 
But when I was staring at it, I can guarantee you I was looking at and looking at recreation. To me, that's swimming pools, water slides, playground equipment, and the maintenance of that. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, hey, Doc. Doc. Yes, sir. Um, it's funny, and I th this is going the wrong direction, but I've got to make a couple comments. I will, I will consider Forrest Gump a American icon and I won't take exception to that but Me neither and that comments ridiculously out of place I'll just leave it there the other well, thing that's no more ridiculous than you pitting one group of people against another that if we're forced okay. that if we're, we propose something and all of a sudden right. we're anti uh, something uh, else gentlemen so. gentlemen um, gentlemen <laughs> that's that'll do we're we're going to go on to no 40, I mean 40, I'm, I really think that's absolutely unfair I got it. This is ridiculous, Doc. The, the union dues comment. Okay. Careless. Careless. Mm. Unfair. The union dues are paid for out of net wages. I can't believe the insult. The mowing. And there we go again. Doc, are you ready to move on? I thought that's what you just said. There he goes again. Hitting one group and attacking somebody. So, you know, it's okay. We'll let the citizens, we'll let the citizens decide what their def I'll get a survey together, ask them what their definition of recreation is, and we'll we'll put it out in electric bills. Okay. So may I the may I um, make finish my comments? This there he goes again. This is really pretty cheap stuff. Here's in 95 for people who want to take a couple of things. First thing, instruct everybody, look how close the vote was. There was no mandate. I think it was either three or five votes. That's kind of in, incidental. But I do think it's important uh, because Aaron was saying he was 25 or something. Um, my wife was the chairman of that. So we have real clear memories of that campaign. And among the people that have strong feelings about not using that income tax for um, salaries in a, in a uh, way that cheats develop, developing the parks. There, you know, we've been about that for a long time. So, um, you know, I, I really, the, the, the ability to give and take is really kind of funny. I, I wanted to bring this up uh, not to have a shot at paying un that taxpayers are paying union dues and a bunch of other things. And so I think it's real unfair to the discussion. The guys, they're all guys that do that work. Some of the mowing, incidentally, is done uh, by temporary seasonal workers. But a lot of those hours that are... Um, that are being put in maintenance in the park. They're literally cleaning up bathrooms. They are cleaning up the, the overflowing garbage. So the I'm not pitting one side against the other. I'm saying that that is the kind of work that is entailed in those 5,000 hours. And, the, and they are union members. They, they pay for their union dues out of their earned income. Fair enough. Let me have my piece. I, I, and I also appreciate Aaron not cutting me off. So thanks. Um, moving on to ordinance 2021-19. Um, Dr. Fellner, I'm sorry. I didn't know if you saw, but Ms. Earlston had her, her hand up. Oh, I did not. I'm so sorry. Ms. Earlston, go I, ahead. I should have spoke up. I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to say, uh, unless I missed something, it, it was my understanding that we were just going to, nothing was finalized in this discussion. It was just that, a discussion. We were going to look into this some more and it was not the end of the story. Am I understanding that correctly? Is that where this was going? We were going to maybe do a little more research and discuss this more? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood that. That was my understanding. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, moving on to uh, ordinance 2021-19. Um, this was the ordinance that you were looking at, Aaron, uh, throughout this. 
Uh, who's going to help me out on this? Uh, Tom, uh, Eunice put a lot of time in this today, so uh, she has all the particulars. This one and probably the next ordinance too. Okay, uh, you know, I agree. The, the the setup. This is a way for us to receive the funding and all that follows in terms of the funds and the appropriation that this ordinance. That is really a Eunice Colleen special. So it better work because we'll we'll rush back and blame it on you if it doesn't. But this is really important um, in order for us to begin to uh, expend the money and then be reimbursed later this year. Thanks, Gail. That's all I got on it. Okay. Eunice does probably. Yeah. yeah I, just want, I just want to clarify with this, um, as you guys may or may not be aware, some funds that we establish have to have approval from the state auditors. We do not need approval on this. I did speak with them as to how um, the logistics of the money would be with this project. Um, but the mayor is absolutely correct. We talked about this towards the first of the year and just needed a little more information. Um, once the mayor's office got that, they passed it along. So this establishes this fund for us to be able to expend and then receive the money. Um, and we're, there's also gonna be a it's going to tie in with the next ordinance as well, but this just establishes that fund. Questions? Okay. Um, could I have a motion to move ordinance 2021-19 onto full council? I make a motion to move ordinance number 2021-19 on the full council. I will second. Um, Ms. Earlston makes the motion and Mr. Ivy seconds. All in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Um, motion carries. Um, next item is ordinance 2021-20. Uh, and I know that uh, Ms. Colleen is going to take care of this one for us. Okay, and I might um, need the mayor to jump in a little bit here and there. I'm not 100% positive on some of this, but um, I guess my biggest question in the end to the mayor will be, um, I, I believe after talking with Matt that we will want this all passed as emergency. So breaking down this ordinance and going through it, um, section two ties into um, the movement of the money for fund 416 that was in the previous ordinance being established. So normally we do not need to appropriate advances, but this, in my conversation today with the state auditors, they are now recommending that we start um, appropriating money for that. If we don't, it runs, the, runs it into the negative on our expense report that you guys may have noticed, but the, um, we don't get dinged an audit for that or anything because it is to be paid back. So um, this section two appropriates the money into the general fund for advances out. Section three um, moves the money then from 101 into 416 with that 416 line being a revenue account. So this advances it so that we can start expending it. Section four then appropriates the 100,000 from that cash then that would be in there into the expenditure line um, as a capital outlay for land improvement for the um, park on the square project. So the next few lines, um, the next sections, I should say, section five, six, and seven are appropriations. So we're not 100% sure exactly what happened at the end of the year. I could have been in a coma. Um, we did have some glitches with the software. I'm not sure if that's what happened, but I had several purchase orders that should not have been closed that closed. And once, once we roll over then to the new year, you cannot reopen to reopen a previous year PO, you have to add money to it and you're not allowed to add money to a previous year PO because it's gonna affect your current year budget. So the funds were dumped back into cash for each of these appropriations because we closed the purchase orders, but we need those purchase orders in place because these are ongoing projects. So um, 
the 102,000 going into the 202 state highway is for the urban paving project. So we need that money reappropriated and put back into place for that. Section six is $46,000. That is for the GPD um, 69K system valuation, the engineering for that project. And then section seven is the $100,710. Um, that is for the 598 widening with GPD. So I need those funds reappropriated so that Tasha can get purchase orders reestablished for those that were closed inadvertently with beyond her control. Um, and those I would definitely want done as emergencies. Questions? Eunice, thanks for the uh, explanation. I know that uh, the last three were kind of cumbersome, but I, I absolutely see what happened. And um, you, you may have had a stroke at the end of last year. Who knows? So <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. I don't know. I think that we usually have one or two like that. Something that uh, it, actually, if you go back through, we have more of an issue with with um, historic PO staying open than getting closed out inadvertently. So it's a, a little bit the extreme of that. I, I think this this corrects it. And um, they're all three important items. Uh, Eunice pointed out that there's a bit of urgency on those. I think the on the other, the state uh, capital bill, uh, we have plenty of time to spend that, uh, but I don't see any reason. It's it really just setting up the accounting and putting us in a position <clears throat> to expend the money once we get a plan uh, designed and a contract let, uh, you know, I guess conceivably a couple of contracts let, uh, but but then we'll expense the money and uh, then be, be reimbursed. So uh, like Gail said at the very outset, that took a lot of, um, of work on his staff's time and I'm glad to get that passed and move ahead on it. I think it'll be good, good to get that in place. Thanks. And I just wanna note that the mayor's staff helped with it as well. There were multiple other purchase orders that were closed but they were not for large projects and large amounts. And so they'll, they'll be absorbed in the budget this year. They were smaller amounts, but these are like the mayor said, important projects. And Tasha worked really close with me on that. And I appreciated her help. There we go. Okay. So that, that's, that really, it's pretty straightforward. It, uh, however, it's super mm -hmm. important if uh, we can get that done, but next, next Tuesday, that'd be, that'd be ideal. Uh, any questions or comments, Mr. Ivy, Ms. Earlston? If not, I'd like a motion to <clears throat> move ordinance 2021-20 on to full council for Tuesday. I'll make the motion to move ordinance 2021-20 on to full council. Mr. Ivy makes the motion. And I will second that. Ms. Earlston seconds, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the motion carries. Any other business for this evening? If not, our next meeting is set for St. Patrick's Day at 7 p.m. May I have a motion for adjournment, please? I'll make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Ms. Earlston makes the motion. I'll second. Uh, Mr. Ivy seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries, and our meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Good night.